back with us here at the Marriott Grand Ballroom where we have the last day of the 22nd Asian Taekwondo Championships. Here we have the second semifinals match in the under 74 kilogram category for men. We will now introduce Jianan Huang of China wearing the blue guard who will be going up against Hun Kim of Korea. Korea has been dominating here and we have Stephen Fernandez to tell us a little bit more about what Korea has done thus far. So far, Korea has won five gold medals in this uh, competition and uh, are quite very comfortable with their uh, lead as the overall, uh, more or less, I would say, uh, uh, soon to be proclaimed champion. But right. of course, uh, we still have a lot of games left and uh, they've been really quite very consistent all throughout this tournament. And uh, next to them, we have uh, Iran also, who will also be uh, vying for the top slot in this Asian Championship. But right now, Korea has won so far five gold medals and one silver in the first two days of this competition. Meantime, for China, they have one gold medal and three bronze medals. And a loss here in this particular semifinals will only rack up another bronze medal for them. Not bad as far as hardware is concerned. But knowing China, they are hungry. But it will be difficult to beat this taller Korean on the right side who is a medalist, a silver medalist in the World Championship. And uh, he's been trying and he's hungry for uh, accolades to be racked up under his name. First round, two minutes on that clock right now as we have our lightweight category semifinals. Korea on the attack. We are trying now to initiate, to take the tempo this first round. Series of front points, a good 45 back leg. Now it is four, it's 1-1. One, one. Very quick also on the part of China to counter with the attack of Korea early on. Uh, I have a feeling this is one of those matches that we'll see high scores, uh, high degree of difficulty executions. And both players are quite very quick, you know, with their stances, the front leg to the fake. And, uh, you know, right now it's still re really hard to, to predict who can dominate this uh, semi-final match. Winner will be here, as you can see with that exchange right there. Not for getting in the middle, no points awarded. Wow, the blows between Korea and China right here. Absolutely, uh, it's like fireworks. These guys are bent on getting to that final round. And in the background, we can see both uh, supporters of Korea and China up on their feet and very anxious to see their players win this game. And that's going to be the last of the friendly taps coming from Korea right there. Later we'll see more powerful kicks uh, coming from both players and a uh, good attempt to uh, double 45 and what we call a bullet kick. Mm -hmm. You'd expect a lot of combos being uh, executed here also between these two. Seeing how they made it here thus far, you know, in uh, one of the fights for Korea when uh, he fought against Afghanistan, it was 13 nothing. rather for China. It was 13 nothing against his opponent. Very close. Korea being penalized for grabbing. It's the first one in, uh, in this game. Meantime, for Korea in his first fight here in the light uh, weight division, he was able to win via a 3 9 victory over Qatar's Mohamed Hamouda. And that's the end of our opening round, and already we're seeing so much fight between these two. Right now, both players really trying to show each other I'm not going to take anything from you, I'm going to be a little more aggressive than you. So, of course, the other side would do the same thing. And right now, it's very even. Both players executing uh, a series of 45. Good 45 by, uh, by China in this exchange. Same. Korea attempting the same kick. It's 1-1.
And for Korea, we talked about Kim Hoon being a silver medalist back in 2010 for the Student World Championships. And uh, absolutely to be able to get it, uh, to be able to get to represent Korea here in the 22nd Asian Taekwondo Championships. He's done a lot more than that. Um, uh, and obviously, he's wanting to uh, take home at least a silver. As we take a look at what Jan Huang has done, we talked about the silver medal in the 2014 Asian Games. That was huge for him. He was a bronze medalist back in 2014 as well, but the goal here will definitely be uh, one to cherish for either fighter. Definitely a gold medal in this tournament will make half of their year very successful. Six more months to go or a few more months before they lose the medal. Not a way to go if you win a gold medal here in the Asian Championships on, in Manila. On average, how many international tournaments a fighter of this caliber as China delivers off of that counter, his second point? How many international uh, competitions would one participate in per well, year? Normally, uh, players would play for about three to four competitions a year. And aside from that, they have played in their local events back in their countries. Right now, China is leading by one. And so we are now will try and press hard in this uh, second round action in the semifinals. Good qualifier by Korea. Not enough to score. China just maintaining his balance, blocking the attack with a right front leg of his. And able to actually back away from that punch attempt coming from Korea as well. No goal for Korea, a minute and six remaining here in round number two. Still a lot of time to catch up. It's just about uh, a little less than a minute uh, in the second round. Korea is just really planning, trying to use the time and score. This fighter from uh, China, talking about Jian Anhua, he has that air of confidence that's different from everyone else. You can see it in his face. And definitely leading by one. That will boost his confidence further uh, going to the third round if Korea doesn't score. The last two seconds of this round. Was short on that attempt for a head kick. <laughs> Player. And reacting to everything that they see here, and why not? It's such an exciting matchup. Whenever you see two powerhouses in Taekwondo like this going at it, both are really high-level players, and having won international events in the past, this is a very important game for them right now on the way to the finals. Round number two is just about done right here in uh, our light flyweight semifinals competition. A little bit of edge right there for Jianan Wang of China. What's the adjustment for Korea now? For Korea, there's a lot of time. It's a full round of two minutes. He has to really carefully pick his kicks, uh, not limit himself maybe to the body if he wants to take the lead in the third round. Well, China can do the same thing. He's only up by one. It's anybody's game going to the third round. Let's take a look at what transpired earlier. I believe that was the 45 that gave the advantage for China in the second round. Uh, and the, the sh attempt that was the short right there. And the nice kick to the shoulder. And those were some of the highlights from our second round of action. Ready for the third? We will have our two minutes. Last two minutes here in the second round. Round, I believe is going to be a very exciting round. Down only by one point, China up by one. It's a matter of who really wants to win. That will determine the player to advance in the finals. All the preparation, all the training will boil down to this for now until we get to that gold medal match. Big exchanges right there, bullets, but a warning issue against uh, Korea. So either player now given a warning. That would be big if China gets that. It frustrates Korea uh, and forces him to uh, make a mistake. Error. Punch right there from China. No goal. And surprisingly, it's China who's really attacking this time. Well, he's up by one. He's not one person to shot. And he's closing the gap. He's not giving enough distance. There you have the punch kick again of China jamming the 45 attack of Korea. And that's really been his 
uh, his uh, tool to try to uh, neutralize that height advantage that Korea has. And he's not moving back. You know, he's, he's really standing his ground, jamming, trying to score. Closing in, in that exchange, perfect for him at this point in the game. A minute and ten here in this third round. China, if he hangs on to this, will be moving on to the gold medal match. Backing away from that 45 attempt. Good punch by Korea, equalizing the score this time in the third round. They were tied at two, and more people are up on their feet. Still the Korean crowd, Chinese crowd, very anxious to see the winner. Punch or made the third attempt, did it again. Now he's up by one. Pressure is on China right now with only 19 seconds left, down by a point. And that air of confidence that we noticed with China slowly dissipating. Let's see. Turning kick by, by China, scoring with a single 45 in that exchange. 14 seconds left. Punch again by Korea. No score. Nine seconds left. We're tied at three. Two amazing fighters going out. I believe we're going to go to a fourth round. Yes, <laughs> another golden point round right here after our first semi-finals match in the women's under 62, scheduled for day three of action. We have another golden point round here, and this is only our third semi-finals match for today. And, you know, we just saw both players really not letting up and uh, really wanting to win, take the lead, equalizing the score. Now we have a golden point round coming up soon. That was the punch that's been working for Korea in that third round. Scoring two punches, really quite effective in that exchange. And now we're even. And uh, let's see what's going to happen in the fourth round. Adjustments on Korea's side. His punches have been working for him. That's how he got two of his three points. And, uh, you know, we don't know. Probably he'll maintain the same strategy and score with the punch. And China will try to maybe score and uh, appreciate the attack. Well, whoever gets to score here in our golden point round will be declared the winner of the semifinals lightweight category match. Whoever can outdo, outsmart his opponent first will advance to the gold medal round, Korea versus China. Korea really very aggressive uh, in this first few seconds of the fourth round. China just waiting, attempting the punch of 45. Korea backing up. Oh, that's going to be a penalty for... Uh, for China for holding and pressing uh, for the floor and the floor. Fourth game of Korea will try to be another, at least, semi-finalist from his country. China wearing the blue guard, waiting patiently as he backs away from the impact. China scoring the golden point, winning and going later on to the finals. China, this game. Yes, because we were already issued a warning earlier, and two yeah. warnings gives your opponent a point. So this will be challenged now by our coach, our coach from China. It's such a crucial call, and the pressure now is on our video jury to piece everything together to figure out whether that was, uh, if, if, if that was really a point for China or a warning. Yes, and, uh, you can see both coaches very, very worried about wow. what's happening right now in the court. And uh, you know, either way, uh, this is going to be very, very important for the video jury to see who really is the winner in the semifinal round. Our Asian Taekwondo Union referees here hard work to determine. This is such a crucial decision. This is the men's semifinals lightweight category. If it's another warning against China, Korea automatically wins. It's valid. It's valid. So, at that point. So therefore, uh, the reference uh, declaration of a penalty is going to be validated. But and, will that uh, point be awarded? Because of that, 
there. Let's see. So I think the score is going to remain. Yes. China is going to be declared. It has been declared the winner in the semi-final match.